Are you guilty of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Some people believe they may be. We're going to study that topic today on the truth and love, so get your Bible and stay tuned. There's the message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring it out. It will give them courage new. It will help them to be true. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring out. Barely ring. The word. Speed it away. Said it today, still far from Jesus, when he lived in sin. I want to welcome you to the Truth and Love program today. And I want to begin by telling you about an incident that happened to me quite a number of years ago. There was a lady who stood in my front yard. And we had visited a little at the door of our house about uh, some spiritual matters, biblical matters that we had been discussing. And uh, she was standing in my front yard shaking her finger at me. Uh, we had been discussing the concept of miraculous gifts, and whether or not spiritual gifts were available for our use today. And I had presented her with the biblical case that miraculous gifts and abilities were available in the early years of the church's existence but that they were destined to be done away uh, when the completed revelation of God was given to man. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 10 and other passages. It's not my point to go into that discussion today, but uh, she disagreed strongly about that and uh, had shaken her finger at me and told me that because of my uh, position on that issue, that I had become guilty of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And she didn't want to be <laughs> anywhere near me physically because uh, she said I was lost and I was doomed to spend eternity in torment and that there was nothing I could do about it because I had been guilty of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Well, was I? Have I been guilty of that? Uh, some people uh, are very concerned because of what the scriptures say about that particular sin and some live in constant fear. Uh, believing that they may have committed that sin and now there is uh, no forgiveness for them regardless of what they might do. Well, that's an interesting topic and it's one that's worthy of our consideration. And so we're going to spend some time today on our program uh, seeing what the scriptures actually do say about this sin. And so I encourage you to uh, open your Bibles to Mark chapter 3 and we'll read verses 28 through 30. Mark 3, beginning in verse 28. This is Jesus speaking, and He says, Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation, because they said he has an unclean spirit. Well, let's uh, first of all consider what some of the common views are regarding this sin. Some people believe that this uh, is a reference to a single one-time act that once you have uh, committed it, uh, once you have uh, made whatever statement it is that constitutes blasphemy of the Spirit, once you've done that, then your uh, eternal fate is forever sealed. There's nothing that you can do regardless of how penitent you may be, regardless of how, uh, you know, how sorry you are, regardless of, uh, of how diligently you seek God's forgiveness, your fate is sealed. There's nothing you can do to be forgiven. That was the view that this uh, lady held who uh, shook her finger at me, uh, but um, we'll see that that's not the biblical view. That's not the case. That can't be sustained according to the Scriptures, but we'll get into that in a moment. There's uh, another view of this sin that uh, is common uh, in some religious circles, and that is that this sin is an example of uh, what some call mortal sins as opposed to those that are referred to as venial sins. Venial sins are those, we're told, that are sins that are not as serious as mortal and that God will eventually overlook them. Uh, you know, if you do enough penance or perhaps uh, spend some time after you're dead in purgatory or something of that sort, uh, 
that uh, those sins will ultimately be overlooked and you'll be able to go into heaven. Uh, and then mortal sins, as this one would qualify in this system, would be those, again, that you can't be forgiven of. Uh, you end up spending eternity uh, in torment, regardless of what you may think or do after that. Well, again, the Bible knows no such uh, animal as venial or mortal sins. Well, uh, because the truth is, uh, any sin that, uh, that is not washed by the blood of Christ will send you to torment. Any sin not covered by His blood will do that. But it's also the case that any sin can be forgiven if a person meets those conditions that God has set for pardon. And we'll talk about that in some detail in a moment. Then there's a, there's a third view regarding this uh, sin in Mark chapter 3 that some have, and that was that uh, given the context in which Jesus spoke about it, where you had some of these um, uh, scribes and others that had said Jesus possessed an unclean spirit, that this was just a sin that could only be committed by those who had spoken those very words to Jesus. And so it basically has no application to our circumstances today. It's not a sin that can be committed today because Jesus is not here in the flesh. He's not uh, uh, performing miracles uh, personally in the world. And so no one can say to him personally, you have an unclean spirit. And therefore that was what constituted the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And therefore it's not a sin that can even be committed today. So people don't have to, uh, have to worry about that. And those are basically the three common views as to how people look at uh, this particular uh, passage. But let's consider, first of all, as we seek to come to an understanding of the truth, let's first of all make sure we understand what the Bible says specifically about the forgiveness of sins. And I mentioned this uh, a few minutes ago, but I want to come back to it and look at it in a little bit more detail. The Bible tells us that any sin can be forgiven. Now whenever you're dealing with a passage that is obscure and difficult, we always have to understand the difficult passages in light of the clearer passages. And so a lot of times what I'll tell people when they're discussing a, a, a difficult text is start with what you know. Start with the simple truths of Scripture and make sure that however you come to understand uh, the truth regarding the difficult passage, obviously, if you've arrived at the truth, it's not going to contradict the clearer passages. And the Bible is clear that God can and will forgive any sin. For instance, uh, 1 John chapter 1, verses uh, 6 through 9. Uh, lay that out very clearly for us. 1 John 1, beginning in verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I want you to take very special note of uh, what John said specifically in verse 9. He said, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just in that He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us, notice this, from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Well that word all means all. It means every one. God can and will forgive any and every act of unrighteousness if we meet the conditions that He has placed on uh, the reception of that blessing of forgiveness. I want you to think too about the Apostle Paul in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 through 14. Paul talked about uh, a number of his sins that he had committed prior to his becoming a Christian. And one of the things that he mentions in that text is, I was before a blasphemer. A blasphemer. Well, this is the, the sin that uh, we're talking about in our discussion today. And Paul said, I was that. But he says in that same text, I found forgiveness. Because I did it in ignorance and unbelief, God 